Hello everyone, it's Pastor Eric Simpson again, Rossington Community Baptist Church, and we want to continue in our Lenten uh, series for 2022. Uh, if you remember, we we're just having brief little weekly times uh, looking at the story of the Passion, uh, all the events leading up to the death and uh, the burial and the obviously the resurrection of Christ. And we've been looking at it through the lens of the conflict, the war that is happening in Ukraine. So we're going to be looking today at Luke chapter 22. Let me just read a few verses, make a couple of observations, and try to tie it in, and a bit of a challenge for each one of us as we, uh, as we think about this and as we look at it. Luke chapter 22 says this, Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, that is Jesus. For they feared the people. Then Satan entered Judas, named Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. So today we're just going to think just for a couple minutes about this idea of the betrayal of Jesus by the one that you know that is called Judas. I guess the thing that fascinates me about this, thinking about this, is that Judas was one of the twelve and actually states that he's one of the twelve. And for that roughly, uh, that rough period of time of three years, Judas walked with Jesus. He saw the miracles. He saw the feeding of the, the 5,000, the 4,000. He saw people being uh, healed. He saw the people being ri risen from the dead. He listened to what Jesus said. And yet, Judas betrayed him. It just boggles my mind every time I come to this time come to this point in the story. You know, this thing of betrayal is very intimate, isn't it? Because betrayal gives us the idea that there is a bond of trust between the one who is betrayed and the one who is the betrayer. Now, I know Jesus is a bit different. He knew that there was going to, he knew what Judas was going to do. He knew what was going to happen because he is God. And we are in a situation that we live in a world of, of a pain, of difficulty, and I would imagine that every person who listens to this little thought today, that you have been betrayed at one point in your life, and it's painful, isn't it? It is painful. And I guess if there's anything that we could sort of take comfort in, once again, is knowing that Jesus himself felt betrayal by one who was incredibly close to him physically and emotionally. You know, Jesus loved these, these, uh, these 12 that followed him day in and day, in, and day out. And so today, as we think about this and this thing of betrayal, you know, I, I, I am convinced if Judas would have repented of what he had done, then Jesus, like Peter, Jesus would have received him back. And it is sad. But the reality of betrayal is there. And as we think about the situation there in Ukraine today, you know, uh, I hear so much the talk of, you know, the Russians saying the, uh, or Putin saying that the Ukrainians are brothers in sense because they're so close in culture and language and all these sorts of things but you know what I don't see how a brother who claims to be a brother could treat Ukrainians as he is treating him the stories I see the videos I see the photos I see of so many Ukrainians being uh, being killed so many being hurt so many hundreds of thousands being displaced. It's, it's beyond my comprehension. I have uh, a friend who we were trying to invite over 
uh, as part of the, uh, you know, the refugee process. She sent me a, a, a brief video that there was uh, 10 Ukrainians killed uh, while waiting to buy bread. Now, I don't know the details, there wasn't details along with the video, but it just boggles my mind. So regardless of where you're at right now, maybe right now you are struggling with, with someone who has betrayed you, someone who had your trust, someone that you love, but then something has happened so that you have been betrayed which hurts right down to the core of who we are. Let me encourage you that Jesus understands because he was betrayed as well. And so I pray that, that this Easter time that we'll be able to really identify with so many things that Jesus had experienced and then we could have compassion on the Ukrainians and the Russians. You know, this is Putin's war. I have no doubt about that seen so many and you've seen so many you know, Russian soldiers who, who had no idea what they were doing and, and they were being forced into, into all of these situations and it's very political I know and there's lots of stories and lots of things but it's horrendous to look at and when we think about this thing of betrayal I pray that uh, you would be able to work through your own situation that if you need to be able to offer forgiveness I pray that you be able to do that and we'll be looking at that we're looking at that as time draws closer as we look at the resurrection. Let's have a brief prayer, and then we'll see you next week. Father, thank you so much for this, these few minutes that we've had together. Thank you for this bit as we looked at uh, with uh, the betrayal of uh, Jesus by Judas. And I pray, Father, for comfort for everyone who's watching, uh, whether they're battling with a betrayal in their own lives and we want to pray for Ukrainians, for the Russians, uh, Lord, that we can be able to see peace um, in that battlefield. We pray that, uh, that there would be a stop to this war. And God, we just want to put this into your hands. And thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week.